All right, I'm doing a quick review on the new Soex Prime unit. This has a much faster processor than their previous models. Uh, you can see that, you know, different coloration. It uses the same small tube. My average background count is uh, seven counts per minute. That's pretty normal. If you're wondering why I don't use microsieverts is you know, guider counters are calibrated to a cesium-137 source, and if you're not measuring a cesium-137 source, the dose rate that it displays is incorrect, because the formula includes the energy of the isotope that you're receiving. So this is what the general unit you should be using is, uh, especially for unknown, background, cosmic, anything like that. Now, the average is 7. Uh, you'll see it fluctuate with 6 to 13 to 4. Radiation is random like that. So, if you see it go up, don't freak out. Most likely it'll go back down. If it continues to go up, then pay attention. <clears throat> this is the main menu. Go here. You can go into a search mode which does a much faster update time and has a graph so you can see the change. This will update independently of the main. So if I had a strong source here, and I may demonstrate one later because I do have a 10 microcurie cesium-137 source to test these with. But right now, I'm just doing a quick overview. Now your dose rate is your accumulated dose rate over time. It's easy to reset. But, if you just leave it on, uh, I, I will explain it in a minute. Saved is anything you saved, dose rates that you've seen. But if you go into settings and dose level, once you hit this dose level, it will alarm. And it can get annoying. Especially if you forget to frequently reset your dose level. This level is a warning level. I usually set it about three to three and a half times normal background. If it gets up to the high, starts beeping, it's like, hey, you know, you want to look at this. Something's going on. Uh, I have some background in nuclear physics. I'm an enthusiast. I've worked with much higher background rates of radiation. So to me, uh, what this little unit would consider dangerous is normal. Of course, I do follow the general procedure of, you know, Alara, as low as reasonably as achievable for radiation dosage. Now, the principle for radiation dosage is, you know, distance, time, and shielding. Minimize your time around any high radiation source because the dose unit is in hours. Distance. Your dosage is governed by what's called the inverse square law. The radiation you receive is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. The formula is 1 over 4 pi r squared. So, by increasing your distance, doubling your distance, you significantly lower your dose rate received. The last is shielding. Concrete, lead, water, whatever. Uh, the sources I have are all in lead pigs within a leaded container. So even though they're 10 feet away, none of my units can detect them. Now, dose level, uh, if you're somewhere you need to monitor your dose level, this will alarm when you hit to a certain point. I don't bother with it because I'll forget to reset it and it'll just alarm on me and be annoying. Volume, yeah, you know, sensor sound is the beeps. Uh, I keep that off. It gets annoying after a while, drains your battery. Key sound, it beeps when you press the buttons. Whoopee. <clears throat> Units, it does counts per minute, microsieverts, and micro rem. Uh, this really isn't a standard measurement. It's usually millirem. But, you know, micro rem, millirem, uh, the difference is about a thousand. But, Use counts per minute unless you're in a confirmed area with cesium-137 such as Chernobyl or around Fukushima. 
or any other similar site. Of course, you have the day and time, and you can see I'm still up very early in the morning. So, time to sleep, off time, 30 minutes. <clears throat> Going back. Dose mode, pretty simple. You can reset it. Search mode, again, you know, this updates much quicker than the primary sensor. So it lets you hone in on a source much quickly, much more quickly. Overall, it's a good little unit. It does as advertised. This little guider Mueller tube is tiny. Like for here, this is a Gamma Scout. It's big. The tube is in this area. Bigger tube, average count is about, about 11 counts per minute with this. Uh, this is also much more expensive and harder to use because a lot of these little buttons, there are sub-menus and it's not easy to navigate through, so a lot of times I have to break out the manual for stuff I don't do frequently. <coughs> I have an Inspector USB, which is one of the better units. Uh, its average count is 30 counts per minute. If you want to know why, because of that. That's a huge pancake probe, they're expensive, and that's the kind of thing you need for testing food samples or anything else like that. I have my personal dosimeter. The tube goes along the bottom here, but you can see here, uh, right now, it's in search mode. So, this is calculated for external, so let me hit the button. And turn it back into dosimeter mode. So this can calculate my dose rate, warm me of the dose rate, warm me of total absorbed dose. It tells me the stay time until I hit my next dose rate limit or alarm. So this is what I use in the lab uh, along with the film badge. This gives me visual and auditory indications and it even vibrates. Uh, it's waterproof. You can beat the crap out of it, Bluetooth, uh, it'll even do wireless charging. Uh, this is about $1,000. Uh, if you're not working with radioactive material on a frequent basis, there is zero reason to buy this, unless you are a real geek or enthusiast. But again, here, very small, handheld, easy to fit in your pocket, does the job. So, two thumbs up. It's a good purchase, has some problems with, uh, you know, higher rates, but that's not uncommon in a consumer unit. It just reads low ranging radiation. When it gets up to high, it's really out of its category and you'll need to buy something much more expensive like an inspector, which has the total timer to allow you to do long term counts and a lot of other functions that uh, are accessed by the menu buttons here. So, that's the end. Again, you know, two thumbs up. It's a good buy for a consumer. Uh, it lets you know your background radiation. Uh, you might want to watch it, see what it is. It's still in search mode. <clears throat> Go into measuring mode. This is four, my average is seven. So, like I said, it fluctuates up and down. Don't be freaked out about it. But, you know, if it gets up, you know, three, four times your average background, take notice and move away. Uh, if it, you know, jumps up and goes crazy, uh, you know, call the authorities, tell them where you are, and let a professional deal with it. Don't expose yourself to radiation unnecessarily. I work with it. I do experiments with it. So, you know, I have a much larger allowable dose. The average dose uh, around the world is, you know, 10 microsieverts a day. Microsieverts. Yeah, microsieverts, not millisieverts. 
As you can see, uh, you know, it is almost 5 a.m. in the morning, so forgive me. Anyway, it's a good little unit, worth the money. Uh, this is the newest one they have out. There were no reviews of it, so, you know, it's good. It's worth the buy for a consumer. Uh, if you're an enthusiast or want to do lab work and you want to look at something like this, or this, even though this, um, it's expensive, uh, it has a 10 year battery, but uh, I would honestly pick this over all of them. Uh, it's accurate, does time measure, and you know, it's reliable and tough. So, that's the review of the Solix Prime. Thank you.